Hi, I'm Richard Carlton. Welcome to the Coach's Corner. Hi, everyone. This is Jonathan Ray with Richard Carlton Consulting, bringing you another FileMaker technique file that you can use in your own solution or get involved in our FileMaker coaching program and have one of our coaches do that for you. In creating a custom database, situations pop up now and again where you want to select multiple records in a portal and then do something useful with that selection of records, like printing them or creating an Excel spreadsheet from them. So you'll want to probably be able to filter a list of records. And once you have your filter, then you can select multiple records or select all of them, unselect all of them. But the idea is that once you have the selection that you want, you want to be able to do something with them, like going to a list view and viewing them all. You can do all sorts of things with this technique, but we're going to show you the bare bones of how this works, and you can build on top of it from there. The three pieces of the puzzle that come together to make this work are one, global variables, two, custom functions, and three, a multi-key relationship. Now, if you aren't familiar with some of these concepts yet, that's okay. We'll tackle them one at a time. We're not going to cover how this portal is actually filtered because we do that in a separate video. First, let's talk about global variables. I'm going to pull up my script debugger from the tools menu and the data viewer so that we can step through this process. I'm going to select one of these contacts from the list. And you'll see that in this script, the first thing that we're doing is setting a global variable. And boom, what happens is selected record IDs is created with that contacts ID, that UUID, that's specific to that one record that I just clicked on. This selection count um, is going to tally up the number of record IDs that I have currently selected. When I hit refresh window here, then you'll see that number show up. That's how it works. So if I click on another one, it will set that same global variable. And what it does now is it adds whatever person I clicked on their number to the list. If I want to remove or deselect the person, this custom function I'm about to show you removes that ID from the list. And now it's gone. You see that? And so if I click on a person to select them, the custom function goes in and checks to see, is that ID already in the list I'm storing? If it is, then it removes it. If it's not, then it adds it. That's how that works. Now, the same thing applies to the Select All button up here. If I hit Select All, then it adds, in this case, all 32 record IDs to the list. If I unselect, it removes them all and removes the global variable entirely. Now, it's important to note that we are storing these in a global variable. And the term global, what that refers to, whether I'm storing these values in a global field or a global variable, like I'm doing in this case, it means that the list that I'm compiling is local to me on my computer at this given time. It's not going to interfere with any other user that's using the database. So the idea is that you can have 20 different users doing data entry on the same database and the list that they are compiling, the selections that they're making, are not going to interfere with one another's lists. You can have multiple people making selections at the same time. And that's very important. So we need to understand that we are using global variables, and that is the double dollar sign, whereas a local variable is a single dollar sign. Let's move on now to the custom functions. I'm going to go to File, Manage, Custom Functions. And the custom functions that drive this thing are Add, Remove, List Items. You can find these by going to briandunning.com 
And you can see here the different custom functions that have over 2,000 of these, and they're free to add to your solution. So you can find them there and copy and paste from his site, or you can copy and paste from our demo file that we've provided here. The add remove list items is the one we just went over, and you don't really need to know how this um, function uh, operates, the nitty gritty details. All you have to do is copy and paste that function in. If I go to the select all or deselect all button in script debugger, let's go and see how this works. I'm going to step through here. Okay, that one deselects them all. We want to see how the select all one works. It goes to else here. And then this is important. It has a little check in here to say that if the selection is over a thousand records, then it's going to take a while to compile the list and it gives them a little warning. Okay, let's go to the next step in the process. This is the one we're worried about here, or this is the one we're concerned with. The selected record IDs, this list values is grabbing all of the related ID contact values for the found set of records, meaning for, for whatever found set I have here, in this case 32, it will then grab all of the values for that field, the ID field, for all 32 records. So when I set that, you can see here it added all 32 IDs. Then in layout mode, really quick, I want to show you how the checkbox graphic works. Let me move this off to the side. So for the select all, deselect all button, there is both a checked and unchecked graphic or button. And for the individual portal ro rows, there's also one there too. Let me remove the data viewer. And you can see this little eye looking uh, indicator on the buttons. And if we go to our inspector, there's the hide object when calculation. And basically, basically this is saying that if the select all global variable is selected, if we have told FileMaker to store that select all variable, then show it, otherwise don't show it. And the same thing applies to this portal row here. If this contact ID is in the list of stored record IDs, that we have, then show it or don't show it. That's kind of how that works. Let's go out of layout mode, back into browse mode. Now that we're back in browse mode and we have our selected IDs, 32 of them, we want to actually do something useful with them. So thus far we've discussed the global variables, the custom functions that allow them to work, and now that we have our selection, we want to do something with that list of IDs. That's where this view selection button comes in. We can easily navigate to these records through what's called a multi-key relationship. Once you wrap your head around this concept, you'll find it comes in very handy. I'm going to open Define Database, Manage Database, and we'll take a look at this relational graph. You'll notice I have a table occurrence contacts, that's my main table occurrence and then another table occurrence related to contacts, and it's related to itself. That's what's called a self-join relationship. Most relationships are connected by two fields with one value in it. So for instance, if you want to see all the contacts with the same company name, for instance, you would have a contacts to contacts relationship, a self-join relationship by company name, and it's probably safe to assume that if a record has a company name, it's only going to have one value in that field. It's not going to have a list of company names like Walmart, Target, and Kmart all stacked on top of each other. But in our case, we're actually going to have a stacked list. This G underscore current selection IDs is a global text field that you can see here, G current selected IDs. That means that if I double click and I go to storage, it has use global storage selected. And what we're going to use this for is we're going to store that list of contact IDs in there. I'm gonna select okay. Let me illustrate this. 
I have a Word document pulled up here. If I have a list of names, here's a list of test names here. And let's pretend that this is my global text field that I'm using in our demo database. And on the other end is the contacts table occurrence. And if this name is included in this list, which it is, then the relationship will be valid. Okay, so if I have a list of 32 IDs and I want to go to those related IDs, if a contact on the other side has an ID that's included in that list, then that relationship will be valid. Let me demonstrate. I'm going to pull up Script Debugger, go to View Selections, and then all it does is it takes our selected record IDs, which are stored in our global variable, it sets them in our global field, and then goes to the related records, like so, in our list view. And you see that we navigated to those specific 32 records because those were the IDs that we set in our global variable. And that's exactly what we wanted. We selected 32 records. Now we're seeing those same 32 records in our list view. And that will do it for our tip today. Selecting records with the global variables and using a multi-key relationship to view them. If you have any questions or are interested in getting one-on-one -on -one FileMaker coaching, feel free to shoot us an email at support at rcconsulting.com. We'll be happy to talk with you.